Hi, this is Kathy Clarkson, and I am going to present my capstone presentation to you now. Um, this is in uh, a partial requirement for the fulfillment of the Masters of Organizational Leadership program at Huntington University, and my professor is Dr. Scott Livingston. At this time, I will share my screen with you, and we will discuss the um, the title of my paper is Toward Multi-Source Feedback and Growing Church Leaders. And again, my name is Kathy Clarkson. The topic of this paper was utilizing multi-source feedback, emotional intelligence, self-awareness, and coaching in church leader development. And this was an interesting topic to me because I've spent many years in church leadership and also now in executive coaching. And so looking at the opportunities and the need to bring these two together. The research will connect what is known about leadership development practices and organization development to ministry leader development. Professional development of executive ministry leadership teams, including pastors and governing bodies, so that includes their elders or deacons, could increase healthy organizational culture and relationships within the church. Some examples of development would include application 360 feedback. In this paper, we're going to refer to that as multi-source feedback, emotional intelligence, and external coaching for improved self-awareness. Our body of evidence starts with emotional intelligence and some definitions of emotional intelligence. There are several out there. Um, here we've got Salovey and Mayer, 1990, cited, as well as Baron in 2006. Um, the purpose of this paper, for the purpose of this paper, EI will be defined as the ability to effectively understand self and others in order to successfully manage emotions and reactions in the context of intra and interpersonal relationships. And this is really key in the, the setting of church leadership as pastors face unique and diverse responsibilities and challenges, probably more, more diverse than most organizational leaders face as they have the traditional components of uh, facilities management and people management and finances, but they also add then to that the emotional components, the interpersonal relationships and the spiritual formation. Matthew Seidner and Roberts in 2002 cite that emotional intelligence is positively tied to the vocation of ministry and pastoral leadership for some of the reasons I just mentioned. Also, Hunt, Mortison, Gorsh, and Maloney in 2013 point out that well-intentioned pastoral leadership that is devoid of EI and self-awareness can cause unnecessary harm. It is not this author's um, perspective that any pastoral leadership or church leadership set out to intentionally harm anyone, but rather through a lack of awareness, a lack of self-awareness cause unintentional harm. Um, and perhaps through the development tools proposed in this paper, some of that could be avoided and mitigated. Self-awareness, Goldman, Boyatzis, and McKee in 2002 describe four domains of emotional intelligence, and self-awareness is the first of those four domains, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. Again, all four of these show up very powerfully in the context of pastoral leadership and church leadership. Because awareness is the key to all the other domains, self-awareness then is identified as the foundational domain of EI by Goldman. Research indicates most leadership performance failures are not due to lack of technical ability or education, but rather character flaws such as a lack of awareness, uh, interpersonal challenges, as well as an inability or unwillingness to change. It's Tucker, Sojka, Frank, and McCarthy in 2000. And it's really important, as Deb Kay in 2016 on page 30 says, for leaders to understand that it's important to get feedback to be aware. Leaders are not just what they think they are. They're also what their followers perceive them as. And so often leaders will um, do self-assessments and make judgment calls about themselves without getting the feedback of what others perceive in their leadership, and this is a, a really important foundational concept for, and a case for multi-source feedback in leadership development. Multi-source feedback is a general term used to describe the process of surveying multiple sources for information about an individual within an organization. Um, again, earlier, um, 360 feedback or 360 review is also a term used, as well as multi-rater feedback. But in the 
course of this paper, we're going to refer to it as multi-source feedback or MSF. It is utilized for both development and performance, though there's much discussion in the organizational leadership community about which is appropriate and which is not. Uh, there are some differences between the two. This author um, suggests that it be used largely for development in the context of church settings or development plus, which is a term that has been coined um, as of uh, the last few years in those circles around debate of development versus performance, where development is primary, but there can also be some performance management elements to, to the process. Multi-source feedback implementation and the success of that multi-source feedback is really reliant on successful implementation. And that is through thoughtful implementation. In other words, not just a snap decision to do it, but to go through a, a purposeful and sequential process for implementation. Um, Bukotic 2010 says that preparation, introduction, administration, analysis, feedback, and follow-up are all the steps to that, that critical process and strategic process. The intentional delivery of feedback is also critical to the success of this program. Um, a desk drop situation where you just take the feedback and drop it on someone's desk without any follow-up or feedback, proper facilitation of that information can really do more harm than good. Uh, Bracken et al. in 2016 cite that. Brecken, Rose, and Church uh, in 2016 define a process of, of, of multi-source feedback, which is to collect the information, analyze that information, and then create a plan to, to move forward and for development, which um, I think simplifies that process well. That plan then for change and for strategic implementation should include coaching. One-on-one -on -one and group coaching is often a part of later development programs and organizational development, and EI training is incorporated to increase leader competencies, uh, such as communication, decision-making, conflict management, and overall efficacy. That's Kerry, Philpon, and Cummings in 2011. There's several different formats of coaching that can be implemented. You can do one-on-one -on -one or group coaching. You can use an internal uh, team member to facilitate coaching, or you can use an external person who can kind of come in and give um, a different perspective to the organization. An internal coach program can provide consistency and organizational culture and training, while external coaching may provide insight and new perspectives. So um, it, what this author recommends for church and ministry settings is individual coaching facilitated by an external facilitator. Um, or coach and then group and internal coaching can be used for lay leadership development within the organization after the executive team has has benefited from some coaching so multi-source feedback plus self-awareness of the leader plus coaching can lead to effective leader and healthy churches uh, there's a growing body of evidence to support the impact of pastoral EI on positive church organizational culture and efficacy, Boatsis, Briz, and Godwin, 2011. Also, there is some personal communication cited in the paper um, between the author and a senior fellow at the Center for Creative Leadership, where they have been utilizing a pastoral leadership development program similar to the one proposed for the past 18 years, and they have seen some positive outcomes through, through that program. A healthy church organization manages well the balance of not only its church building and facilities, but also inter interpersonal relationships, as well as the spiritual development. So Manala is also pointing again back just to that broad scope of responsibilities for for pastors and for church leaders that really make them ripe for EI development and the need for um, just a, a real intentional development of emotional intelligence to meet those those needs. So the thesis of this research then is that church leaders and their churches can positively impact their mission through intentional leader development, utilizing multi-source feedback to develop emotional intelligence and self-awareness through coaching. Some opportunities for further research would include formal evaluation and research collected by the Center for Creative Leadership, that pastoral program mentioned, uh, researching the connection between biblical themes of discipleship and development, um, as discipleship and development maybe have similar 
um, similar utilization and could connect pastors to development more uniquely. Research connecting biblical transformation of the mind theology with neuroscience and biblical context for seminary training and ongoing leader development. So what are the opportunities there? Um, again, my references are included here, and I would love to discuss this topic further with um, anyone. My email address is kathyclarkson at gmail.com, C-A-T-H-I-E-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N at gmail.com. It's been a pleasure, and I hope that um, you are now more familiar with the need to connect multi-source feedback and self-awareness with pastoral development.